Hello, everyone. My name is Mara de los Reyes, and uh, welcome to Hope for a Healed Child. I'm so excited to have you with me this evening, and I'm here with Jacob Alvarado. I know him and his wife, Jessica. They are an amazing couple who are passionate for the Lord, passionate for ministry. They have a ministry called Ignite Fire International. Welcome, Jacob. Hi, everyone, and thank you, Mara, for having me coming back. Absolutely. So one of the things as I was um, just thinking about having you back on Hope for a Healed Child is I was thinking about our inheritance and just about your story. I know that you've shared it here before, but I have some new listeners that probably don't know your story at all. So I wanted you to share a little bit from the time that you were a young boy and, um, and what had happened and then how really um the thief comes to steal kill and destroy so i wanted you to just share a little bit about that so people know your background yeah so when i was younger i grew up in the church my dad was an amazing pentecostal evangelist just really had a awesome foundation in faith in the word of god it was a wonderful time growing up and in i share i i don't know if i shared last time but I, my dad had an encounter with Catherine Kuhlman before he began his ministry and had, and he got a chance to meet her. She prayed over him and prophesied. And, and that was the, the first miracle that my dad operated in is, was at one of her meetings. And she had said, you, some of you are going to feel heat in your hands. And he was one of them. And she said, pray for somebody that needs prayer. And there was a woman in a wheelchair and he went to go pray for her and heard bones cracking. And she, got up out of her wheelchair. So that was one of his first miracles. And uh, he began to evangelize. And that's how he started his ministry. And I grew up in a wonderful home with that as a norm in our home. And it wasn't until later on, my dad uh, became a lone ranger and, and didn't have a lot of support. And so he ended up he was struggling with anger and some other, some other issues. And, and it really opened the door to alcoholism. And, and once that came in, my dad lost the ministry, my mom kicked him out of the house. And, and it was a, 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 a 180 complete change where um, he was out of the house. And all of a sudden the drug dealer boyfriend came into the house and our whole life was flipped upside down. And I started to become uh, uh, the things of the world became attractive to me. And that's really when I started to deviate away from the Lord and became the prodigal, the prodigal child and got so entangled with drugs and alcohol and the party life that it really destroyed my life for, for quite some time. And it wasn't until years later when I got set free and back on the path that I was originally uh, called to, it wasn't until years later when that happened. I also think about when you had shared before, when you were just a little boy and when your dad was ministering and you laid hands on somebody, can you just briefly share that testimony? Cause I feel like even with that one woman had said at that moment, it did something in your heart. Absolutely. So it was a a service that my dad was doing, it was a, uh, at the end, he, he prayed for the sick after he gave a salvation message. Every service, he would pray for the sick. And he would have all these people come up that needed healing, and there would be a line of people. And I remember one particular Sunday, I think I was six or seven around that age. I come running up because I wanted to pray for people. And as he prayed for people, in the front of the altar, I was behind everyone and I would lay my hands on them. And we went through all the line. And so it was custom at the end of the service, my dad would greet people as they left uh, the service. And I was standing next to my dad. And one of the ladies came up with her, her cane. And she said, when you prayed for me, nothing happened. But when I felt your son's hand touch me, she said, I felt the power of God and I was healed. And she left her cane and said she didn't need it anymore. So that was pretty profound for me when as a, as a child. Yes. Yeah, that's so significant. But then didn't somebody come up after that and 
and and yes. basically discourage you from yes from so the enemy came right after that situation the following sunday i was so excited i was ready for the end of service because i knew that he was going to start praying for the sick again and as soon as and i had determined in my mind as, as soon as he gets ready to do the altar call instead of being behind the people i was going to stand up front with him and pray for people and so i was going to get a little bolder with my with my faith and as soon as i ran up on the stage one of the musicians grabbed me and yelled at me and, and told me not to be coming up there and 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 from that moment i had not prayed for anybody else after that and so it was a discouraging moment for uh, uh right after an amazing moment with the lord yeah and i think wow how quickly the enemy got in there and just discouraged your heart through somebody who probably was like oh no we can't have a young child up here on stage but oh my goodness jesus says let the little children come to me and i yes. really believe that he doesn't just want us living and walking in our full inheritance and laying hands and healing people but that he wants our children to be doing that as well so um so it's just intense the way that he came in not only in that way but then also just took your dad out and and then you know f the family kind of followed suit in that way just kind of went down a negative path but um i know that you got restored and so you can talk a little bit about that and then i want to know i want you to be talking about the um healing is our inheritance yeah you know just to touch on something before uh, i go there so i really believe this that that satan comes like like we were talking about earlier to steal kill and destroy and especially, especially if we're going to step out in the things of God and step out by faith, he's going to come to try to snatch that out. And so another incident that happened where um, I really believe, especially when it comes to healing, Satan comes to hinder that any way possible in our, in our thinking with doubt. And if we're going to stand on the word, I believe he comes to squeeze and, to, and, and, and whether we believe that word or not, is gonna is gonna determine what happens in that moment of squeezing he comes to 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 steal that that word and so before i went on my first trip to ecuador last november i remember getting covid the uh a month before and i remember praying and we were going to go and ha and we were we were meditating on what we were going to do and praying for the sick and we were, we knew god was going to move in a miraculous way and so i had all of my healing scriptures ready before i got sick mm -hmm. i get sick and i remember going through every healing scripture i went i had things playing on the radio i had i had the tv doing youtube all the healing scriptures and I did everything I could think of to get rid of this sickness. And, and the pain was so bad. My head was pounding so, so, so hard. I could hardly see. I couldn't, couldn't hear. It, 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 was, it was the most horrible experience I ever had. And I remember I went from, from trying to command things to go to pleading for mercy, for asking forgiveness for everything I had. I, I just started going through everything I could think of and and uh and, and what was happening i believe the enemy was coming to squeeze and to say do you really believe what you're what you're saying do you really believe what the scriptures say and i remember there was moments of doubt and and uh one of the one of, right right it would have this was for four days so it started and for the fourth day in i rem remember being a little ball on the bed and i couldn't see i couldn't hear barely and I just hear my wife come in and she's like, command it to go. And I'm thinking it, it was it was one of those moments of clarity. She, it, it, it's like her voice just cut through everything. And deep down within my spirit, I said, yeah, I, I need to command this to go. And I just remember speaking out loud. And I said, Satan, take your hands off this body and let me loose in the name of Jesus. And, and it was 10 minutes. The fever stopped the 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 fever broke the headache stopped all the symptoms stopped and two days later i went to go get retested and it was negative and so 
uh, one of those in that experience, I realized that sometimes the symptoms and the and the pain and the problems of 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 that that's coming against us can be so loud that it drowns out the word of God and what we what we're standing on or what we're believing in. And, and we have to affirm ourselves in those moments, because I know after that moment, it's not a belief anymore. I know that the scripture is true. And if those symptoms come, it's not, I'm going to go through all of the, the, the scriptures. I just take a few scriptures that I have been, that I've planted in my heart. And I use that to command things to go and, and resist the enemy. So yeah, that's so good. And I think too, like he just wants us in a place of desperation. If he can get us really desperate and, and start questioning, like, is this going to work Is you know, you, you know, planting those little seeds of doubt. And, um, if we start to latch on and, and kind of let go a little bit of the word and, and we're just down and desperate, man, that's just where he wants us. That's where he wanted Jesus when he tempted him in the desert was, you know, that could have potentially been a place of desperation. And it's like, no. And I love that your wife came in and and it's almost like just that one little sentence. She was just reminding you of who you were and you're like, oh yeah, that's who I am. And this is the authority and power that I have through Jesus Christ. So that's exactly true. And, and the, and the devil hasn't changed his tactics. I mean, from the garden, his, his thing is, is, did God really say, is this real? Is this real? Is this true? And once that, that seed of doubt can come in, if we meditate on that and dwell on that, it really can snatch the word. And then the word becomes of no effect because we're, 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 we're taking our eyes off of the Lord and and the truth. And then, and then looking to the lies of, of the enemy. Yeah. And I heard something recently, I wrote it down. It was, I don't know if I'm going to quote it exactly, but it was something like our thinking has to be bigger than our feelings. Mm -hmm. And when we can have like, I, I just want to say clarity moments, like when our feelings want to get sucked into like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. It's a desperate situation. I feel awful or my child is so sick and, and you start to feel sorry for yourself. It's like, no, let your thinking rise up, have a clarity moment and allow that word to just break through that, uh, the noise of the emotions that can really bog us down. Absolutely. Yeah. So I know you had a couple of scriptures that you wanted to share about our inheritance being healing. Yeah. So um, if anyone has their Bibles, we can turn to Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. And it says, uh, so then Jesus went out there and departed to the region of Tyre, Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and and cried out to him saying have mercy on me O lord son of david my daughter is severely demon possessed but he answered her not a word and that's a lot of times something that we experience that's that sometimes we we will pray for something and we don't think that god is answering and so but he answered her not a word and the disciples came and urged him saying send her away for she cries out after us. And I don't know how many times pastors have turned away people for healing or discouraged them for healing, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to open that can right now. But he (laughs) answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so right there, uh, a lot of people would have, would have just walked away. And then, and then she came and worshiped him saying, help me. But he answered her and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Now, just that sentence right there, probably 90% of the church population would have got offended and walked away and probably would have stayed offended until eternity came and, and would have held on to that resentment. And, and, and so this woman's tenacity is, is, is so inspiring to me that she says, And she says, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And and one of the things that that is interesting is that he said, 
that healing is the children's bread. And then Jesus answered and said to her, oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done as you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. And so I think that that is amazing, especially that that healing is the children's bread, the tenacity to, to, to sit at the table and eat what the master has given. And I think it's, it's really awesome that the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 53 says what he carried her sicknesses, he bore our pains and by his stripes were healed. And then on the day that on the night that he was betrayed, he takes the bread that's on the table. And he says, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. That is our inheritance. And then likewise, uh, in Moses, the types and shadow that come from Moses, uh, they took the, the blood of the lamb and put that over the doorpost. And he said, and, and this is, this is uh, uh, I love communion and what that represents. And he takes the blood and, he, and, and, and they were protected from the angel of death that came to the children of Israel uh, during Moses's time. And Jesus takes the cup and he says, this is my blood which is shed for you. And, and that blood seals us, redeems us, uh, gives us our inheritance of the kingdom and transforms us. And, and not only do we have his blood, which seals this, this, this body, this temple, but we also get to partake of his bread, his word, his healing, which he had paid for us 2000 years ago to give us what we're seeking today. Yeah, so, so good. And not only does he want to just offer, you know, he, he offered his body on the cross for us to have, and it's just for believers. We just need to believe, right? And receive and yes. accept him as our savior. And savior doesn't just mean saving us from sin. It means sozo. It means healing, delivered, um, set free. There's so much more to salvation. It's all encompassing. And even as I've studied that further, I don't have that study in front of me, but there are like at least four different um, Greek words that I've seen that mean salvation. So there's so yes. it's such an all encompassing term that most Christians, I know for me, I never knew anything about those things and, and the greater depth of what that means. So that's so good. But not only does he want to give that to us, but the bigger purpose of Jesus is so that we can also go out and offer that to other people. Um, yes. And so I want you to talk a little bit about that because you've stepped back into what I would say is your original destiny that God had planned for you to be loving on and healing people through the grace and blood of Jesus. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll just, uh, I'm, I'm going to actually read you uh, the scripture in Matthew right before that incident is why I'm doing what I'm doing now. But also to, to just touch on the faith aspect in uh, Hebrews 11, verse six, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And it just takes a little mustard seed to move a mountain. Jesus talked about that. And, and here, I love that it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so I have a positive confession. I believe in positive confessions, especially confessions from the word and taking that scripture. I say, Lord, I, I am so honored that I please you because I believe your word by faith. And so just that little confession of, of, of agreeing with God's word, I know that I please him. And, and this is really neat. How do we receive our salvation? How do we receive healing? It's right here in Hebrew 11, verse 11. It says, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. And so just believing God's word by faith not only pleases him, but that's how we receive. We receive our salvation by faith. We receive our healing by faith. And it's because we, we count him faithful who had promised who speaks the word. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I heard a teacher say recently that God's love language is faith. And I was like, I, like I that. love that. That is so cool to think of how we just fill up his, not that he needs his cup filled. He's, you know, God, but 
in relationship, it's like, that's his love language. When we come to him in faith, he is so like, he loves that. That's all he's really looking for is just believe me. He's, he's given us so much and that's all he asks of us, which is so small compared to everything that he's given. Absolutely. And so taking God at his word, one of the things that I like to do is, is to use my imagination. And, and I think you've heard me do this live with, with an audience and, and I, and I, and I share vocally how I use my imagination to put myself into the word of God. And so God has, has done so many things for me, so many supernatural things that, uh, I, 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 when I read the word, it's so easy to put myself there that he's talking to me. And, and, and for, for those who haven't had those experiences, I think just even when you go to the Bible and say, this is God speaking to me, that can change a whole lot of aspects on how you receive from the word. And one of the scriptures that jumps out to me is in Matthew uh, chapter 10, verse seven, it says, this is Jesus saying, and as you go, and I believe he's talking to me, he's talking to other people. He says, go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he says, heal the sick. He's, he doesn't say pray for this. He says, go and heal the sick. He says, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead and cast out demons freely have received freely give. And, and so I literally take those words as if Jesus is speaking to me. And I say, Lord, here I am to do thy will as I see you in this word is how I will go out um, in the same power and authority because it's, it's all in here. It says, I've given you power over Satan, over hell, over the grave and take this further my kingdom, save and, and preach the gospel, the good news of what he's done and speak the truth, which sets people free from, from bondage, from sickness, from all these things. It's preaching his truth that sets people free. Yes. And I think one of the things that really freed me as I pray for other people to be healed is to know that it isn't, it isn't up to me. All I'm doing is accessing what Jesus has given to me. Mm-hmm. And that's so amazing. And so beautiful that he, it says, as he is now, so are we in this world. And so we're just, it's like, we're, we're an, like a, a conduit, I guess, is a great way to put it where we're connecting people to Jesus when we pray for them. And it takes kind of us out of it, even though we are, the Bible says in first John, we are God's children right now. So living as his children, he has designed us to do what he does, to do what he did. To, he showed us everything who he is through the life of Jesus. So it's so good. It's so, um, he just loves so intensely and he wants us to go out and do the same things that he has done. Absolutely. And, and, and it has nothing to do with us. And I think that that's where people get hung up. They don't feel that they're holy enough or righteous enough or, or good enough to, to minister healing to someone else, but it has nothing to do with, with us that we're, we're, like you said, we're just a vessel for him to do his will on the earth. And, and I think something that, that can hinder some people too, is they don't know what his will is and his will is always found in his word. And he's always ready to perform his word. Like some people are like, I don't know if it's his will to heal me. Well, it's always his will to perform his word. And what does his word say about sickness? What does his word say about this situation? And then we can go, we can have confidence in that. And, uh, and we are his hands. We are his feet. He needs us to, 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 to carry his glory so people can see and to hear and, 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 and what he's like and we may be the only jesus that somebody sees we may be the only jesus that somebody hears and so we have to step out in that faith that it can't just be something that we know it has to be something that we we uh or not something that we believe but something that we know in our heart and and that these people the people are his he's calling to them and we have the honor to be his voice to those people yeah, absolutely. And I know I share in my book how um, 
it was really religion and the church that I learned like how to pray if it's if this is your will God and it was so distorted and when I realized and learned it is his will it changed everything it changed my view of him it changed who he was to me and I was able to see the true nature of God and his character and his goodness. And I was like, wow, I don't have to end my prayers with if it's your will to heal my son or, or to heal me or anything like that. When we see what Jesus has done, we can know that that is the will of God. So that's so good. Amen. <laughs> um, I wanted you to share, is there anything in particular, because I know you've gone on a couple, at least a couple of mission trips. Is there any um, healing testimony that you want to share with us this evening? Well, I can share the the last two experiences I had when I was in Ecuador, just, uh, I think two months ago now, or in November, it, it was uh, an awesome time. So a unique experience was one of the nights was a healing, a healing night. And it was going to be a healing service. Pastor Kurt was going to be preaching and we were going to be praying for the sick. And before the meeting, I had a dream of a, of a woman with a, with a short, dark hair in a ponytail that came in with crutches and we were going to pray for her. We prayed for her in the dream and she was healed. And so I was, I remembered the dream. I told pastor Kurt, I'm like, Hey, I think there's going to be someone here that that's going to need that's that we're supposed to pray for. That's going to come in with crutches. And he says, okay, I'll share it from the, from the podium. And the church was packed. And so before the service, someone comes up to me that I shared the story with and they said, there's the girl with the crutches. And I look over, she has the ponytail, the short hair, everything just like in the dream. And so I told Pastor Kurt, and he's like, oh, this is wonderful. He, and so he does, he preaches his sermon. And before he starts calling out words of knowledge, he says, there's someone here that, that one of our, our my, my, my uh, volunteers had a dream of, and the Lord wants to heal you. You're, you're a girl with crutches. And, and there was only one in there. So everyone looks over and sees her and he says, Jacob's going to pray for you. So I, I walk up to her just like I did in the dream and I prayed for her. And a, and a unique experience was in the dream, she didn't get up and start walking. It, but in the dream, I also knew that there was something wrong with her neck. And so I pray. Uh, so I asked her, I said, Hey, is there something wrong with your neck? And she said, yes. And I said, so I prayed for her neck. She starts crying. Everyone's around that, that everyone, there was a few ministers around praying for her also. And I, and I, and, uh, and I told her, I said, I said, we laid hands on you by faith. And it says that these signs will follow them that believe they will recover. And I said, you're going to have a miraculous recovery. And not only did, are you going to have a miraculous recovery, this was all shown pre- in, in advance just for you in a dream. So there's no mistaking what's happening tonight. And she's crying. And we found out later that, sh- that her family is part of the church and she had just had knee surgery the night before and she wasn't even going to come to church. And so that was a a unique experience just for her. And it's just so cool how God loves us so much that he'll just, he'll do something special just for some, for one person, uh, because that's something that they may, may, she, that's something she may have needed. And so it was just a, a, a special moment for her. And the other unique experience was the night that we were going to have an open air revival night with all these people coming to an open air meeting, all the uh, pastors and everyone gets together and we come to have dinner before the event. And so we're all sitting there and one of the pastor's sons who's 14 years old is sitting next to me and he's translating for me. And so I'm sitting there and I look over and I tell him, I said, Hey, I get this weird feeling, but I'm like, Hey, do you want to do some ministry with me? And he says, okay, what do you want to do? And so I said, when that waitress comes back, I want you to ask her, is there anyone in her family that's doing witchcraft? And he was like, are you sure you want me to ask that? And I said, yes, just ask her, tell her I want to know. So he asked her, she gets a little weird about it and says no, and wants to know why we wanted to know. And then 
I told her, I said, I thought I had a word from the Lord, but I guess I didn't. And she walked off. And so we continue to eat. We finished. All the ministers get up. They all walk out. And me and this kid are getting up. And we come to walk out. And she comes out and stops us. And she's like, I need to talk to you guys. And we went to the side of the restaurant. And she questions. She says, what? why did you want to know if somebody was doing witchcraft? And I said, I believe that I heard the Lord and he wanted me to ask you. And it's for a specific reason. I don't know what the rest of the instructions are, but that's what I got. And maybe it's to pray for you. And she says, well, my ex-husband is in Santeria and has been dabbling with witchcraft for a long time. And I, and then I got the word of knowledge and I said, do you, do you know if he's, uh, put curses on you, put witchcraft on you. And she said, yes, he has. And I said, I believe that I was sent here to pray for you in the name of Jesus and to plead the blood over you and to pray for him. And I asked her if she knew the Lord and she knew the Lord. And, and so I, we got a chance to minister to her. I prayed for her. I prayed for the husband and we walked out and the coolest part of that whole situation was the, four, the the pastor's son who was 14 years old. He's walking next to me. His eyes get big and he's like, it was true. He's like, it was real. Like you, you, you knew. <laughs> and I said, that was the Lord. I was excited to know that that was the word of the Lord for, for that situation. But, but those were two awesome, unique experiences that happened on this trip. That is amazing. I love that. I think my favorite part of that story is you didn't just pray for her and break curses off of her, but you also prayed for her ex-husband. Like that is bringing true kingdom where you're extending out to even those who don't believe yet and, and praying over them. So I love that part too. Um, Jacob, we're just about out of time, but I wanted to see if you could just wrap us up in prayer over these parents or grandparents, the people that watch and are standing for faith and healing for children. Yeah. So Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I just pray that your word would illuminate everyone that's watching the, the, to reveal your nature, your heart for healing, for what you've provided 2000 years ago. We, we curse sickness and we, we command it to wither away and die. If there's anyone that's watching that's sick or that's hurting, we command that sickness to go. We command pain to go. We command sinus infections to leave. We command pain in backs to go. We command cancers to wither away and die in the mighty name of Jesus. And we release by faith your healing to whoever is watching in the mighty name of Jesus. We just release by faith your word to those who are watching. And I pray that they receive by faith what you have done in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, Jacob. I always enjoy having conversations with you and talking about what God has given to us and just blessing people with that. So thanks for joining me tonight. Absolutely. And thank you everyone for coming on this evening. And I just pray a blessing over you as you go into the new year, 2022. I just um, declare double blessing over your life for this new year. We'll see you next time.